Hey, welcome to Outsmart Your Guitar. Glad you could join us. In this edition of Practice Sessions, we are starting with part one in a series on octaves. It's a two-part series, so today we're going to focus on rhythm applications of octaves. All right, so let's just get right to it and be sure to like and subscribe to Outsmart Your Guitar along the way. When you employ octaves in rhythm playing, even in solo playing, you change the character and the atmosphere and tone of the music. And that's the idea. When you bring certain techniques in, they will alter the sonic landscape. And so it is with octaves. As I mentioned earlier, we're gonna focus on rhythm applications today. So let's get to it and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about as we go through this. The first thing we need is a rhythm over which we're going to play the octaves. So you have an A minor, an F, a G, an E minor, and then of course a G again to round it out. Now, the strum pattern is pretty straightforward. You're going to go one and a, uh, that's your only upstroke, two and three and a, uh, four and. All right, so pretty straightforward. And here's what you're going for. Tempo-wise, you don't really want to play too much faster than what I've just done there. So that's around 70, 80 beats a minute, maybe a little bit quicker. So in the 80 to 90, no faster than 100 beats a minute at the highest. And uh, you just want to have a nice clean rhythm going, right? So take a few minutes, learn this progression, smooth it out, put it to a metronome, and then record it into your looper so that you can use it in a few minutes. Octaves. All right, never done them before? You're in the right place. If you've done them before, consider this a little bit of review. So we're going to play the major scale, but we're gonna do it with octaves. So your first finger will be playing these notes in that order. Your fourth finger will be playing these notes in order, okay? So you start with your first finger at five on the sixth string and your fourth finger at seven on the fourth string. Now, picking, you can strum it or you can hybrid pick it, playing the lower note with the pick and the upper note with the finger second finger in this case. All right, you ready? Here we go. Start with the A, move up two frets to B. Now you wanna move over one string, but back three frets to C sharp, up one fret to D, up two frets to E. Now you wanna move over one string and go back three frets, but now you want to stretch this an extra fret up to the seventh fret while your first finger is at four on the fourth string. Your little finger is on seven on the second string to create the octave. Move up two frets and that's, uh, what is that? <laughs> F sharp and then you move up to G sharp and the octave A. Go backwards, A, G sharp, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B, A. So, pause, play through this, get comfortable with it, 
And the reason your fourth finger is being employed is because when you move from here to the F sharp, your fourth finger is already in play. So you just move back and move over one string and move this finger up one fret, done. Versus playing with your third finger on the octave E and then having to switch to a new finger to play the next set of notes uh, on the fourth and second string. It's just easier if you're already using the fourth finger to just stretch your first finger back and you're in play. All right? So pause, practice, learn it, smooth it out, put it to a metronome, get it flowing up and back at a nice, comfortable tempo. Let's look at the first four bars of the melody. I know I have all eight of them there, but let's just look at the first four bars. So you're also going to employ a technique that's really useful in octaves, and it's a slide. Uh, you've slid into notes before. Well, here we're going to do it with octaves. So we're going to slide from 10 to 12. And I'm only going to reference the first finger um, because the octave note uh, is, should be relatively obvious, right? So you're going to slide from 10 to 12 on one and, and it's in time, and you're just going to pluck once and use the kinetic energy to move to 12 to keep the thing ringing out. One and two, three. So you hold it over to the uh, uh, through the third beat. <laughs> I can't talk. One and two, three. Then you're back to 10, four, then repeat it again, one and two, three, and then slide into it a third time on four and, back to 10 in one, two, down to seven for three, four, stay on seven for one, two, back to 10 for three and four. All right? So here's what you're going for. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So pause and practice that. And then slowly work it up to the tempo that you recorded your progression into your looper at. So do you remember the progression tempo you used? That's where you want to practice this. And only the first four bars for now. Get it down and then we'll get to the second four bars. Let's look at the second four bars. Now, you'll notice it pretty much repeats the original idea in the beginning. So we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three. And now here's where it changes. On four, we go to the ninth fret of the fourth string and slide up to 10 for four and. Four and, and then back to nine for one. Four and one, two. Then we move back to the fifth string at ten for three, four, down to seven for one, two, back up to ten, three, four. All right? So here's what you're going for with the second four bars. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. straightforward stuff. And you'll notice that the second four bars is essentially a variation of the first four bars. Just a little variation, not a great big change. So practice the second four bars, get it up to tempo that your uh, rhythm progression that you recorded is at so that you can play this well. Then what you want to do is put all eight bars together, but not with, don't play over the backing track yet. Just get these down at tempo with the metronome. So here's what you're going for there. Three, four, one, two, 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 Right? 
and then it just starts over again. So make sure that you play this all the way through smooth and flowing and get it at the tempo for your backing track. So you're ready for the backing track after you play through this and get it flowing right to the metronome all by itself. Take about seven to 10 minutes to make that happen. Time to bring in your looper and now play over the top of it. Here's what you're going for. Three, four. Wow, well, let's get this going. Three, four. And that's what you're going for. A nice, beautiful, accompanying, octave rhythm part played on the electric guitar over the top of an acoustic or even an electric rhythm as I have here. Play through this and practice this and really get it down and listen to it. And again, pay attention to what part of the chords you're playing with the part. So you'll understand a little bit more of the, the potentials of how a rhythm part is put together. I just want to drop in here real quick and remind you down in the description, you'll see a link to patreon.com outsmart your guitar. Click the link, go on over and check it out. You can join for free and get access to a number of lessons that I put up for free for you to sample along with the written material. Then when you join at one of three levels, you will become a full-on patron and you will begin to gain access to a whole host of material that's not featured here, expanded versions of lessons that are featured here, and all written material for lessons that feature them. So go on over, check it out, and become a patron. All right, let's get back to the lesson. Here's a major key rhythm, and we have a D, an A, an E minor, a G, a B minor, and then back to A. Now, for most of the progression, you have the rhythm is strummed like this. One and two and three and four. In the fourth measure, you'll notice we have one and two, three and four. So a little variation there. Otherwise, the other four measures are played exactly the same. So here's what you're going for. <clears throat> Get it down and play it at a nice, easy tempo that's comfortable and warm and fuzzy and all that fun stuff, right? A nice, typical, jangly pop rhythm. And then, when you've got it down, put it to a uh, metronome, smooth it out, and then record it into your looper. The octave rhythm part for this uh, progression is actually... Pretty straightforward, pretty easy stuff. So we're going to be at the fifth fret on the fifth string. Again, we're just going to call out the first fingers fret and string. So here we go. You got two beats on five on the fifth uh, fret, and then move up two frets to seven for three, nine for four, back to seven for one, two, three, four. Repeat for two beats. One, two, move to the fourth string of the fourth fret for three, up to five for four, back, uh, stay on the five for one, two, back to four for three, 
four, go to seven on the fifth string for one, two, fifth fret of sixth string for three, four. And then you're back to the start. So here's what you're going for. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, and so forth. Again, no slides here, so this will be a lot easier to play. <laughs> All right, so pause, practice this, get it down, smooth it out, put it to a metronome, then get it up to the tempo that you were playing the progression app, but don't play over the progression yet. Smooth this out at tempo until you have it really working well. You've recorded the progression into your looper. Now it's time to play the octave accompaniment over the top of it, right? So here you go. This is what you're going for. Three, four. <laughs> That's what it should sound like once you've got it down. Now, your tempo can be a little slower, but not much faster. You don't want it to get too cartoony, right? So you want it to be at a nice, easy going pace. That gets you where uh, you want it to be because that's where it's going to sound best. So take your time here and really play over the top of that progression for five minutes or so until this starts to really sink in and become a unified whole. Because that's what you're going for. There you have it. A basic foundation upon which to build and expand your use of octaves in playing rhythm. Adding an octave part to an already existing rhythm part for a song can actually enhance it. I mentioned this at the very beginning, how you want to augment things, do things a little differently, and octaves are an option that you have to and should consider to employ in helping a song get a little bit more of that stuff to make it sound better because we want our stuff to sound the best it can, and octaves is one of the tools you have available to help you create better rhythm parts in your songs, all right? So spend time here, have fun with it, explore, right? All right, thank you again for spending your time here. I know your time is valuable, and I know that if you're spending your time learning what I have to offer, that you see it's worth the investment. And I really do appreciate that. Part two is coming up in which we'll talk about how to use octaves in soloing. All right, so stay tuned for that. And when I get it recorded, I will put it up and you will be able to access it. Until then, you take care and we'll see you soon. <laughs>